Hi everybody, I'm John Oles. I'm Assistant Professor of Ceramics at Jacksonville State University in the Department of Art and Design. Um, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the courses that we offer in ceramics um, and some of the things that you might be interested in learning more about here at JSU. So ceramics exists in this really interesting cross-section between art, craft, and design. So a lot of the thought process, a lot of the creative process that goes into making objects in clay um, has a really great ability to take elements of art, craft, craftsmanship, and design and kind of combine them into your final product. So some of the courses we offer in ceramics, one, we start with a hand building course, which is largely sculptural based, um, but we also work with clay in a functional context, a context of traditional handmade techniques um, of functional pottery. And then ceramics two is a strictly wheel throwing course where we exclusively learn how to make pottery on the wheel and deal with the um, specific design considerations associated with handmade pots. One of my favorite things about handmade pots is that the way that they integrate into people's lives and they are um, artwork that has a purpose that is made with certain design considerations for use. As somebody who really likes food and is excited by food and the way that food is presented in handmade work, um, I think this is a really great opportunity to explore some design problems in clay and have these pieces live and enrich your everyday life. So what I'd like to do now is take a minute to show you uh, a demonstration of one of the first projects that we do in Ceramics 2 on the potter's wheel. We're going to learn how to make a bowl and talk about some of the design considerations that go into making a bowl, specifically a functional bowl, that's, that's meant for use. Um, you've heard a lot about rapid prototyping and fast design and efficient design. This is very much slow design and it is very much improvisational. You're, you're designing on the fly, you're creating in real time. So the first thing I want to do is get this lump of clay centered on the wheel. To get it centered, I'm applying a good bit of pressure with my core leaning into it and a good bit of pressure with my fingers, this L-shaped part of my hand. And that's going to keep the clay from getting away from me. It can't go out because of my hands. It can't go down because of the wheel. So it's got to go up into a cone. So I'm going to cone this piece of clay up and down two or three times until it feels like it's spinning perfectly still. It looks like it's not even moving. When I get to that point, I'm going to know it's on center. And this is 90% of the first month of class, is figuring out how to get this ball of clay centered. So once I find it, I'm going to open it up. And we're working very mechanically here. You know, your hands are working together. If you think of them as parts of a machine, we want to keep that leverage. So as I begin to open this and I begin to set up the structure that's going to be this bowl, I want to think about what kind of food is going to be served in it. Um, where is it going to live? Is this going to be a decorative piece that sits on somebody's mantle or is this going to be uh, a daily bowl for soup or cereal or something that is right in the front of the cabinet. And when you know the answer to that question, you can kind of proceed to make decisions based on that intention. So, uh, for example, if you were making a bowl for uh, a rich beef stew, a real thick winter beef stew, you might want to have a shape that curves up more, something that can be held in your hands, something where you can feel that, that warmth and kind of smell that and you can see the steam rising from it. And I really like the picture that that paints in your mind and the decisions that you make um, to make that form. 
Whereas if you're making a bowl maybe for a chopped salad or um, a plate of pasta or maybe a, a cold soba noodle, you might want a more open form, something that maybe um, frames that meal and, and kind of completes that picture of how you're going to serve this. So for this piece, I'm going to do a little bit of an in-between, maybe a bowl that would be good for pasta or for cereal for a noodle soup, so it'll be a little bit wider. So with this first pull, clay always wants to go out. It always wants to go down because it's a centrifugal force on the wheel and gravity. So we want to compensate by going up and in as much as possible. Now once I have this basic shape, I'm going to start to inflate it. And I want to really think about the volume that's going to be inside of this, the air that's surrounded by this skin of clay. And I want a pot ideally to look like it's taking a really deep breath to be inflated by that volume inside. And that's going to make for a really dynamic form. So while I'm creating this, I'm thinking about how that form is going to sit, how that's going to terminate into a flat surface, what the foot's going to look like. All of this extra clay is going to be trimmed off afterwards. I want to think about that interior profile and how, if this was a, a bowl for soup or for chili or something, how that spoon would glide right across the bottom of that interior profile. Um, I'm thinking about what the color is going to look like. Is that color going to complement the food that's going to be served in it? Um, is it going to be a solid color? Is, or is it going to be a decorative surface, a canvas for, for decoration? All of these decisions I'm making at the same time as I'm making this form, and hopefully they'll make sense, and that the finished piece will have a gestalt of these ideas and these concepts of form and function. And it will be a beautiful piece to use. So there we go. 
Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any more questions or you'd like any more information about the ceramics classes or any of the other classes in the Department of Art and Design at JSU, please email me here at jolies at jsu.edu or check out the Department of Art and Design's website. Thank you.